Hi, I'm calling this video Surgical Recall, Tips for Medical Students Joining Surgeons in the Operating Room. If you're not a medical student, I'd love to have you stick around, but I'm really focusing on those that might be in the operating room and get so quote unquote quizzed by surgeons when they're scrubbed in. I know when I was a medical student, scrubbing in was an intimidating process, although it was exciting. I knew I wanted to become a surgeon. And having a few answers to the common questions a surgeon might ask certainly gave me confidence. So today, we're gonna to talk about hernias. And if in the operating room with a surgeon, one of the first questions they might ask is, what is a hernia? Well, a hernia comes from the Latin term to rupture. Now, although hernias themselves are not ruptures, there's certainly a damage to the abdominal wall or a opening in the abdominal wall that allows contents from inside the abdominal cavity to protrude out. And we usually say there's some disruption in the fascia or the musculoaponeurotic layer of the abdominal wall. That's opposed to something like a diastasis where there's spreading of the abdominal wall but there's actually not rupture through the fascia. That's a different thing. So sometimes there'll be bulges but they aren't truly hernias, an important clinical distinction. Now in the operating room, especially if we're talking about inguinal hernias or groin hernias, which are the most common type, the surgeon might ask you to differentiate between what types of groin hernias are there. Well, generally speaking, groin hernias occur in two categories. There's the inguinal hernias that occur above the inguinal ligament and the femoral hernias that occur below the inguinal ligament. The inguinal hernias are much more common than the femoral hernias. Now, the inguinal hernias themselves are divided in two general categories the direct inguinal hernia and the indirect inguinal hernias. And when a surgeon asks you, well, what's the difference between a direct and an indirect inguinal hernia, they'll want you to describe it in one particular way. They'll want you to say that a direct inguinal hernia protrudes through the abdominal wall medial, so toward the midline of the inferior epigastric vessels, whereas an indirect inguinal hernia occurs laterally to the uh, inferior epigastric vessels or away from the midline. Now, another way to describe a direct inguinal hernia would be to say, well, it protrudes through what's known as Hasselbeck's triangle. And if you say that, the surgeon is definitely gonna ask, well, what is Hasselbeck's triangle? And Hasselbeck's triangle is an anatomical region defined by the inferior epigastrics laterally, the lateral aspect of the rectus sheath medially, and the inguinal ligament inferiorly. And again, direct inguinal hernias protrude through Hasselbeck's triangle. Another really common question that will be asked will be, well, what are the nerves that we might encounter during a groin hernia? Well, the common nerves that we encounter are the genital branch of the genital femoral nerve, the iliohypogastric nerve, and the ilioanguinal nerve. Each of those nerves are found in three sort of specific locations. So firstly, the ilioanguinal nerve runs along the spermatic cord. So you see it when you're counting the spermatic cord, when you're dissecting the sac off the spermatic cord. The genital branch of the genital femoral nerve runs through and within the spermatic cord. And the iliohypogastric nerve runs below the external oblique, a little bit laterally to where you're operating. Okay, so the next question that might be asked, since you're talking about the spermatic cord, might be to ask, well, what's within the spermatic cord? The surgeon might ask, tell me the contents of the spermatic cord. And typically, you'll wanna say the following thing. You wanna say that the testicular artery is in the spermatic cord. You'll wanna say that the pampiniform plexus or the venous plexus is within the spermatic cord. You wanna say the vas deferens is within the spermatic cord. You want to say the cremasteric muscles are within the spermatic cord. And you may or may want to say that the, again, the general branch of the general femoral nerve is in the spermatic cord. Those are the general things that you want to say. And finally, one question that might be asked is if you're operating on a woman, women do not have a spermatic cords, you're going to say uh, that uh, in women or female patients, instead of a spermatic cord, what they have is the round ligament, which originates in the uterus. 
So those are some specific questions that a surgeon might ask when you're in the operating room. That's today's video on hernias surgical recall.